Thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Are you looking for a reliable and affordable VPS hosting? Hostinger offers an exclusive Black Friday deal on their VPS subscription plan. You can get a 12 month VPS hosting plan for just $6.99 per month, which is a whopping 63% discount. But wait, there is more. You can also use my code, which is code with Ari, to get 10% discount on top of the discount that Hostinger offers. Don't miss out on this amazing offer and take your website to the next level with Hostinger's powerful VPS hosting. What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video series on my channel where we're going to have a look at probably the most requested video series on my channel, which is Laravel Livewire. Now Livewire is a powerful full stack framework that allows developers to build dynamic web interfaces. It is built using Laravel and Alpine JS. For me, as a backend developer, using Livewire is a huge plus because I don't need to write a lot of logic as you do need to do with frameworks such as React or Vue. One of the key advantages of using Livewire is its ability to handle server-side rendering, which means that the UI components are rendered on the server and sent to the client as HTML. This not only improves performance, but also enhances security by reducing the risk of client-side vulnerabilities. Now most of you probably know that Livewire integrates seamlessly with Laravel. If you think that Vue and React integrate easily, you probably haven't used Livewire before. Livewire leverages its robust features such as routing, authentication and database management. This makes it a perfect choice for Laravel developers who want to build dynamic web interfaces. Now I did mention Alphine JS a moment ago, so let's talk about that for a moment. Alphine.js is a JavaScript framework that works alongside Laravel Livewire. It provides interactivity to Livewire components without the need of writing separate JavaScript code. It is lightweight and it's very easy to use. One of the key reasons why Alphine.js is powerful is its simplicity. It allows developers to add dynamic behavior to their UI components using only HTML attributes, which is also the power of Livewire. This means that you can add features like conditional rendering, data binding, and event handling directly in your HTML markup. One personal advantage I think that Alphine.js has is the fact that it has a small file size, making it fast to load and perform. It focuses on providing the essential features needed for interactivity without adding unnecessary complexity. Now, most of the stuff that I will be doing will come from the documentation on Livewire's incredible website. But before we can start the installation process, we need to install a Laravel project because Livewire is installed inside a default Laravel project. So let's navigate to the CLI for a moment and let's create a new Laravel project to Composer. So let's say Composer, create dash project, dash dash prefer dash dist, Laravel dash Laravel, and let's name it Hostinger Livewire. Once we hit enter, give it a moment, because our project is currently being installed. All right, now let's change directories into our project by saying CD into hosting our LifeWire. Now, before we perform any other commands, I want to quickly open my project inside PHPStorm. So pause the video and I'll see you back once you have done that as well. Now, the reason why I wanted to open my project inside PHPStorm already is because I want to show you something inside the composer.json file. Once we open it and try to search for Livewire, you won't find anything. This means that we need to install Livewire as a composer dependency package. So let's navigate back to the CLI for a moment. And let's perform a clear right here. We're going to perform the composer require command. It's a package created by Livewire, where the package name is Livewire as well. Once we hit enter, you'll see that it's pulling in the composer package. All right. Let's navigate back to PHPStorm for a moment. And well, I can already see that Livewire has been added right here, where the version is compatible with version 3.0 or anything higher, which is basically being set by the caret right here, which indicates that minor and patch versions can be updated automatically when running the composer update command inside your project. But major version updates will not be automatically installed to prevent breaking changes. Now the magic of Livewire needs to happen inside the resources directory. Well, basically the view part of it. And what I want to do right here is basically open the views directory and create a new application structure. So in my views directory, I want to create a new subdirectory named layouts. 
And in my layout directory, I want to create three files. The first one will be app.blade.php. That was a typo, give me a moment. All right. The second file will be nav.blade.php, while the last file will be named footer.blade.php. Now I have created a GitHub repository. So let's open it for a moment, where you will find the templates inside the resource directory, views directory, layout, where you will find app, footer, and nav. So what I want to do is to basically copy them real quick. So this is my app page inside my app.blade. Navigate back, open the footer, copy it, paste it in here, and we have the nav. So let's copy this one as well and paste it inside the nav page. All right, now let's close off the files. And I have added my GitHub repository in the description down below. Now, when you add LiveWire to Composer, you don't need to add any additional configuration. Everything is already set up for you to start using LiveWire in your project. Pretty cool, isn't it? We're not going to create a working application. Well, we're going to create one without errors, obviously, but I simply want to show you the important features of LiveWire. So I'm not gonna create a application from scratch. So what I want to do right now is basically set up something very simple. So let's navigate to the CLI for a moment and let's perform a clear right here. And I want to create a new migration and model. And once again, I'm not going to follow best practices by creating separate tables for certain columns. I simply want to create a table and model which I can use to interact with the database. So let's create a new model and migration. Let's say PHP artisan make column model. Let's name it task and let's add a dash M flag to it. Once we hit enter, you'll see that our model and migration have been created. Let's navigate back to PHP storm. Let's open the databases directory migrations and uh, let's open the task table and right in between my ID and timestamps I'm simply going to create a new table through the table object it's going to be a string where the name will simply be name now let's navigate back to iterm one more time because I want to create two seeders to have some dummy data so let's say php artisan make colon seeder let's name it user seeder and let's also run the PHP artisan make colon cedar named task cedar. I just personally prefer cedars over factories. Don't ask me why. It's probably something I just got used to very quick when I started using Laravel. Now the last thing that I want to do right here is run the valet link command. So I can open my project inside the browser. Now let's define our cedars real quick. Let's navigate back to PHP storm. Let's close off our task table. See this directory and let's start inside our user seeder. Right here, I'm going to make a call to the user model, the create method. I'm going to pass in an array, simple stuff right here, where the name is equal to code with Dari. The email is info at codewithdari.com. And my password will actually come from the where is it? the user factory where you will find the hashed password. So let's copy it, paste it inside my password value, which will basically have the value of password. Now let's close off the user seeder and open the task seeder. And what I want to do right here is first defining an array named tasks, set it equal to an array, pass in an array inside of it, where the user ID column will be one, and give me a moment, I actually forgot the user ID column. So let's say table foreign ID. The foreign ID will be user underscore ID. It is constrained on the table users and it is cascade on delete. Now inside my task seeder, I'm gonna pass in a name of simple task one. And then right after my array inside my tasks array, I'm gonna pass in another array where the user underscore ID will also be one, and the name will be task two. Now, right below our array of tasks, we need to loop over our task array because we have multiple tasks and insert them into the database. So let's say for each, because we're gonna loop over our tasks as one single task. 
Then right here, we're going to use our task model. And we're going to use the insert method where we're going to insert our task itself. Since we haven't defined our guarded or fillable property inside our model, we can't really run this. So let's open our app directory, models and task model. And for this example, I'm simply going to use the fillable property where I'm going to set the user underscore ID, but also the name. Now let's quickly register our seeders inside our database seeder. Let's get rid of the comments that we have. Right here, we're going to use the this call method, pass in an array of seeders where the first seeder must be our user seeder, where the second seeder will be the task seeder. Now we're almost done with this part. So we do need to set up our database credentials, create a new database and migrate our tables. So let's close off the three files that we have open, open the .env file, scroll down because my database will be named hostinger livewire my username is root and my password is dari1234 let's navigate back to iterm perform a clear let's say php artisan migrate all right artisan is asking us whether we want to create our database so let's say yes so it has created our database and it has run the migrations and finally, we need to run the php artisan db colon seed command, where you will see that our two seeders have been seeded. Now there's one more thing left, and I'm not really sure whether I want to use it within the course, but I'm still going to define it. Let's navigate back to PHP Storm, and let's open our task model, and let's quickly define a simple relationship. Let's say public function user. We're going to return this belongs to and it belongs to the user model class let's type in it to a belongs to and i think we're set right now before we wrap up this video i want to show you that live Warrior allows you to publish configuration files and if you have used laravel before which i actually expect you have you most likely know that you can publish any configuration file or package and so on this needs to be done through the cli so let's navigate back to iterm Let's perform a clear and let's say php artisan livewire colon publish. And the livewire command is something we have pulled in through Composer, which is a new set of artisan commands that we can use. Now let's add a dash dash convict flag to it. Now, as the command implies, this will publish the configuration file of livewire to your Larva project. So if we navigate back to php storm, let's open our convict directory where right here you will find a livewire configuration file. Now in this file, you can customize the configuration settings of livewire according to your needs. Now once you create a component, Laravel will store the component inside the app directory, where it will create a livewire directory for you. This also will be the namespace, which you can change right here. Now next to creating a livewire component class, Artisan will also create a view for you. And right here, Right here, you will see that the view is stored inside the components directory, layouts directory, and app directory. Now, I'm not going to cover all these configurations, but I hope you understand the point of how you can make configuration changes right here. Now, I want to wrap up this video where we talked about LiveWire, and we have installed LiveWire into a skeleton Laravel project. We have created migrations and seeders, and we have talked about the published configuration file. In the next video, I want to have a look at components in LiveWire. If you do like my content and you want to see more, please hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.